They take Wednesdays off. It is Thursday now, and former President Donald Trump is back in a New York City courtroom today. Third day of jury selection in his hush money trial. And one of the seven jurors sworn in Tuesday was excused earlier today, which means they now again need 12 more. The judge says he wants selection wrapped up this week so opening statements can begin on Monday. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner, here with my co-hosts Emily Campagno and Kaylee McEnany. Also joining us, former NFL sideline reporter and host of the Michelle Tafoya podcast, Michelle Tafoya herself, and chairman of O'Leary Ventures, Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin O'Leary is here. Good to see you both. All right, let's begin with Eric Sean, who's been very busy today outside the courthouse. A lot of news constantly because they are back in court today. And we're focused on what at this hour, Eric? Yeah, it's a very hectic day today here, Harris. Uh, imagine first being called for jury duty. You know you're coming down here, and there are lots of cases, but you don't expect walking into the courtroom because they don't tell you beforehand. And you see the defendant, and that defendant face to face with you is Donald Trump. Well, that's what's happened to the jurors. We talked to one of the excused jurors who says she was shocked at this whole experience of being called for this case uh, of the former president. And this comes as Mr. Trump is in more hot water with the district attorney. The excused juror, who would only give us her first name, Kat, says in no way did she expect to be called for this case. We were shocked and frozen, and, uh, you know, it's a big case. It's a historical thing, right? right. So it's, it's, you know, it's very important. I mean, it's, a, it's very important. Like, our role was very important there as jurors. Another juror who had been seated as juror number two, while well, she had second thoughts Tuesday night after she was picked, and she has been excused. Turns out her friends and family figured out that she was chosen for the jury. That woman is an oncology nurse, and when she went home after being selected, she got spooked because all of her friends and some of her family members asked her about the case, uh, and details of her life had been made public, and she said she had concerns about being fair. Meanwhile, District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office is demanding that Mr. Trump be cited for contempt of court for seven more social media posts that he made slamming the proceedings. He also reposted articles and media commentary critical of the prosecution. Three posts attacking Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen already have been cited by the DA. But in court, Trump's lawyers charged that his reposting what others say does not necessarily violate the gag order. And as for, as for the former president, he has claimed he's being unfairly muzzled. There shouldn't be a gag order, let me just tell you. The gag order is totally unconstitutional. The judge should not be there. The judge is highly conflicted. He should not be there. And as far as the second batch of 96 potential jurors who were brought in today when they were asked to raise their hands if they could not be unfair, 48. Just over half said they could not judge Mr. Trump properly and fairly, so they were excused. They've now gone into questioning individual jurors in the jury box who were picked by random, and three of those jurors said that they have already read Mr. Trump's book, The Art of the Deal. And one of the jurors who is being questioned says he follows both Mr. Trump and Michael Cohen on social media. Harris, back to you. Oh, social media, the great unifier. <laughs> uh, Eric, Sean, thank you very much. You know, Kaylee, when I look at this, um, we know that we have a right to an impartial jury. We have a right to an impartial judge. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if this Judge Mershon is di displaying any behavior or past ties to signal impartiality himself. I think he's doing the best he can. It's a tough situation. It's an unprecedented situation. But what I'm interested in, Harris, is I look at that image we just saw, that breathtaking image of President Trump in Harlem. I mean, wow. No one wants to be in the situation that the former president is in right now. But it strikes me as this is the 2024 campaign playing out before your very eyes. And you have President Biden, Politico put out today that his strategy, President Biden's strategy, is to not comment on this. Probably a smart play because then you're kind of leaning into the arguments Trump has made. He made the one comment about my opponent is busy right now. So he mm -hmm. made that one comment, but they're trying to stay away from it. Trump, however, is leaning in. He's leveraging these appearances where he's on every broadcast network to great effect. You don't want to be in this situation, but those images in Harlem, the crowds that gathered, and then the lackluster appearance of President Biden at a gas station. 
What a contrast. Yeah, he's also talked about how President, uh, former President Trump is going broke through the process. I mean, he can't stop talking about Trump. He may not say his name, but he's focused. All right, let's go to this real quickly before I go to Mr. Wonderful. ESPN host Stephen A. Smith believes Democrats want Trump convicted in the hush money trial to avoid facing him in the upcoming election. Here it is. It's much ado about nothing. To my liberal friends out there, all you're doing is showing that you're scared you can't beat them on the issues and the merits. That's why he keeps saying it's a political campaign against me. That's why he keeps saying they can't beat me at the election, at the polls. This is the only way they could do it. You have given more fodder to that argument, which means we'll never have peace in this country because tens of millions of people see what extent the other side is willing to go through just to keep them out of office because they can't beat them on their own merits. Man, you got to check out YouTube every now and then for a <laughs> calm Stephen A. Smith. Everybody had a comment about that. I'll start with you, Kevin. Um, I have a different take on this case, and I just want to preface my words saying before I comment, I've talked about these cases in New York now for months. Um, this, this really, and I, every time I bring this up, I get all this Trump stuff, Trump stuff. Forget about Trump, okay? We don't do this in America. We don't go after the office of the president with, with porn star cases. We give a, a broad mm -hmm. swath of latitude. And if you're an ex-president and you murdered somebody, I get it, or been accused of murder. But, but what is this? This hurts the American brand. I keep saying that. I was in Geneva last week. 150 countries represented there. Everybody's talking about this, saying, what is this porn star thing? Like, this is an American president. This is the office of the United States of America's highest office. And we're doing this? This is sheer stupidity. And I'll tell you what should happen. This should be pushed until after he wins or doesn't win. This should be not part of this election cycle at all. And this is not a Trump-loving comment. This is about the American brand where I bring capital from all around the world to invest here. We look like clowns. Yes. I hate this. Yeah, I agree. Emily. And to provide a more color into that landscape, first of all, the reason why court's not in session on Wednesdays is because of budget because of the failure of our leadership and those in elected office to account for the budget, so we furlough. That's why it's closed. Great point. I, yeah, yeah, I learned that the hard way as a wow. young attorney when I tried to make a filing on a Wednesday and then I got chewed out. The, so, the, so we start from a position of toxicity and incompetence. And then secondly, let's look at, hmm. again, a secondary trial occurring or, or a concurrent trial occurring right here in the, in the city of Manhattan, which is a criminal trial prosecuting an NYPD officer who punched an assaultive man in an Upper West Side Apple store. That is who Alvin Bragg is prosecuting, alongside a former president for a business falsification charge that no one else saw. It was personal records. That's what Manhattan is? That's what the criminal justice system is in America? The answer, I guess, is yes, because it's clownship. Final point on the Stephen A. Smith thing, it's just like that scene in Gladiator, where Joaquin Phoenix stabbed Russell Crowe in the ribcage ah. because he knew he couldn't fight him squarely That's in right. the arena. Out of, because his gear was over it, so nobody could even yep. see that he had been stabbed. Yes. Uh, your thoughts? I missed that film. I've got to go back oh, and watch, watch it. Now. I must. So good. Uh, I love your point, uh, because this is clownish, and, and we are looking foolish. When you've got, I'm going to say it, illegal immigrants, illegal aliens being thrown in jail for punching out police officers, and then walking out and flipping off the cameras and going free. And then the city is pouring all of its judicial resources into this hush money case over a porn star. Like, non-disclosure agreements are a dime a dozen. And we're trying to prove what here? And we're trying to... And this is, this is where all the resources are going? It's embarrassing. It's sad. And it's... You know what? I agree with you. Leave Trump out of it. Whoever this happens to, it's wrong. Yeah. It's a desert on the right. left, though. Everybody's thirsty. Mm. And no doubt when Alvin Bragg saw Letitia James just feasting in terms of running with Trump's name in her mouth, he said, I can do it too. Ugh. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.